Hi friends, welcome to the weekly stock market update. It's Friday, I'm in New York at the moment, uh, meeting clients and giving speeches on investing. I guess the campaign for a million.com comes to New York. So we've had quite a bit of traction out here. So apologies that it's Friday and the Wednesday broadcast was a little bit delayed. So let's get on with it straight away. And where are we? <clears throat> Remember, this is education, it's information, it's not a solicitation to go and buy any particular stock. By the way, the other reason I'm in New York is I'm working on this book, uh, which the Financial Times are due to publish. Uh, so where are we on valuations? Well, it's the same old story. These don't change that much. You're paying $27 for every future expected dollar of profit in Microsoft and $30 for every future expected dollar of profit in Apple. You might say, why would I pay so much? Well, because they're the growing company and valuation is not the only measure of what will make a stock price move. What about these cheap companies? And we'll have a look at some of these a little bit later on. Why are they not going up as fast? Well, guess what? Oil isn't a growth industry. It might have a degree of momentum, which is another factor which moves stock prices as well as, as I said, revenue growth. But valuation is only one factor and this is evidence of it, which is why we don't just look at valuation and anybody an IFA or a wealth manager who tells you they've got a value fund, they're idiots because what they're doing is they're only looking at one factor and they might be waiting a very long time to get you any decent returns. Uh, the reason they do it is because <clears throat> asset management companies have lots of money. They've got to divide it into different marketing uh, sub funds so that they can sell you more products. Okay, so be careful of value funds or growth funds. By themselves. By the way, I wanted to remind you of this. The frequency of rolling two-year S&P 500 returns since 1950, average positive return, 32%. Now, when our pension goes up by a third, either in a year like this year, where the, uh, as you're about to see, the Nasdaq's up 33%, the S&P's up 33%, you're over the moon. But even if it took two years, you'd be over the moon. And that's the point. Don't necessarily even look at it over a year. Well, two years perfectly fine. Positive returns, 88.5% of the time. This is what makes my job incredibly easy because my job is to put people in front of the opportunities. I can't tell you whether the market's going to go up or down. What I can say is it tends to go up, tends to produce this. Past is not a guarantee of the future, but at least if you're in a position to take advantage of the opportunity, then guess what? You're in a position to take advantage of the opportunity. Whether you own a company and you're investing your own money or whether you are putting in a SIP 401k, whether you're in Canada, America, Australia, wherever, or like me in New York. Another reminder of some of the things before I get into the stock market update. Look at this. Has your pension lost a fifth of its value this year? The reason this often happens with workplace retirement plans is because a lot of the money goes into bonds and people think bonds are they're like a bank account that they can give you guaranteed interest only if they're held to maturity. And when fund managers don't do that, then you can lose a lot of money. Okay, so that's not me saying it. That's This is money, which is part of um, Daily Mail still, I believe. Anger grows over Mercer's UK's awful treatment of pension savers. I know I'm in New York, but I want to still focus a bit on the UK as well as the US. <coughs> your, your pension provider, especially your workplace pension provider, um, is almost certainly somebody who's doing a poor job. We know this because the newspapers keep highlighting it. That's how we know it. Not because I'm saying it, it's because they keep saying it. Morrison's, Marks & Spencer, Whitbread, Scottish Power, your workplace pensions, just be careful because, as has been revealed in the press, they can be pretty awful. Speak to HR. Give workers power to ditch pension schemes. That's been the call from the UK regulator, the regulator, in a call for reforms to workplace retirement savings. Why are they being pushed to do this? Because those bloody pension schemes are so awful. So whether you own a company, you're doing it yourself, or it's a workplace pension, please look into the poor performance and what's going on. Because if you're not getting this, <coughs> then it's because the workplace pension is in a set of really poor funds. And you might think, well, they're experts. Why would they put it in poor funds? They've got a conflict of interest. They're working for a big firm. They've been told you could only put it into growth companies or UK companies or value companies. So they're picking from a narrow gene pool. As long as they take their salary from the fees you pay them, they're going to keep selling you stuff and not generating performance. Has your pension lost a fifth of its value this year? Yeah. So like I said, now, here we go. Uh, 
why do these retirees reti why do those retiring face massive losses despite FTSE highs? It's another article. This is to do with the Aviva pension. It had dropped twenty percent last year. This article <coughs> was about again one of the reasons why. Wait a minute, stock markets at all time high. How come your pension's not performing? And it's two main reasons. They've put the money into bonds. This is an old article, by the way. It's over 11 months old, about 12 months old. Um, uh, they've put it into bonds or they've put it into a narrow group of equities. Um, this is the last time I was in New York. Uh, I think I've aged since then. And um, as you can see, I've got facial hair. So just a reminder. And sometimes they put it into bad investments. Basically, they can't get out of them. This is Scottish Mortgage Investment Trust, the darling until the market falls, and then they lose 50% of your pension. So I just want to give you a warning about that. What's coming up in earnings? Let's get back to the stock market update. Well, the things which could potentially move the market, before market open, JP Morgan's results are coming out. United Health, Johnson & Johnson is quite big. Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, of course. Um, these are potential market moving earnings we're in earnings season uh well, we still is are in the us uh, <clears throat> now if you own any of these netflix elevans and so on then obviously expect some volatility uh, but aside from that the ones that i highlighted are the potential market moving ones i'm not expecting any uh, sharp movements to the upside because it's quite overbought the potential really is to the downside at the moment <coughs> where are we on oh do do this i'm hoping to get about half of you know four hundred thousand tiktok followers and a hundred thousand on youtube within the next month where are we on the way in which we analyze stocks we're going to continue using the same process whatever the market headwinds are because we can't just look at value we need to look at valuation growth think and when i give my clients this database and i met one of them in new york um, on this visit when I give them this database the job is to make life incredibly easy for them okay that is the job that's why we took the value box the growth the income uh, <coughs> all of these boxes uh, cash return capital investing we do not want to leave any important piece of information uh, on the table without looking at it and then we have to weigh that information we just mark things in green so it makes your life a lot easier you don't need to know the numbers and then we filter it so we give you we do all the work for you our job is where your plumbers where your workmen my data team and i our job is to do all the hard work for you uh, so that you get the data and then based on the volatility of the individual stocks you can say well i want the low volatility ones because i'm lower risk alpesh rather than the ones with higher volatility and that doesn't mean that you're getting less growth it just means you have fewer stocks to pick from, which is perfectly fine because you're only looking to pick 20 anyway. Over the past week, it's been an amazing week, particularly for NVIDIA and Broadcom. As you can see, Oracle as well, some of the tech companies. We'll dive deeper into each of these in just a second. What about the past year? My word, over the past year. Well, over the past year, NVIDIA is up nearly 200%, Microsoft 26. Massive difference. Oh, gosh, but they were valued relatively similarly. How come the big difference? That's why we don't just pick one stock. We don't know and didn't know nvidia would shoot up so much uh we didn't know microsoft would shoot up that much but what we knew was if they ticked as many of our green boxes as possible for value growth income cash flow then we're in a position to take advantage of the opportunity should it present itself our job is not to predict the future through a time machine or a crystal ball it is to say these tick all the boxes if there's a tailwind we should make lots of money if there's a headwind they shouldn't fall so far thankfully five years out of seven there's a massive tailwind one of the reasons I'm in the United States is to take a deeper dive into just get a feel for the economy and what's going on, speak to investors, speak to business owners over here as well. Um, so when I'm investing in this and bringing the information back to you, it is not done just remotely from an Excel spreadsheet in London, but it's actually being done by being in the market itself. Okay. Uh, exchange traded funds. I'll do a separate video on this uh, at some other point, but for the moment, uh, it's this is what the funds are looking like okay market year to date as you can see the s is up 21 the nasdaq's 20 this is since january but as ever uh, uh you can see these phenomenal gains come in spurts there are periods when we don't panic and this is the point at which most private investors panic they exit here then they wait and wait then they enter back here then they exit back here. This is why private investors don't get these returns because they don't have 
um, the older brother that is me to help them and explain, relax, take a deep breath, don't exit here, don't enter here, don't exit here. It happens time and time again with the novice. You can give them a 21%, basically you can take a horse to water, they still mess it up. Okay, <clears throat> with um, the sectors, this is how the various sectors are done, they're all up. We don't gamble on individual sectors. Imagine this was a horse race which started in January and I, and, and you asked me, what, gamble on these horses, why would I do that? We look for quality companies and whether they're in utilities or financials or communications and use, doesn't matter what sector they're in, as long as they're good quality companies. Of course, if the sector does well, they'll have a good tailwind. The problem with sector-based investing, and people will tell you, well, I look at the right sector. Again, they're idiots because what, what it does is it masks poor quality companies which might be in that sector. So they say, well, I'm gonna pick companies from this sector. Well, then you're picking companies, which is fine, and then the sector is irrelevant. But if you're picking them just because they're in a sector and you think, well, the sector is going to do well, then you might be picking a poor quality company and should the sector be hit, then your poor quality company is gonna have, as they say, or as Warren Buffett said, when the tide goes out, you see it's been swimming without shorts. So you always wanna pick good quality companies regardless of what sector they're in. It'll help if it's a good quality sector, but it has to be a good quality company first and foremost. Uh, let's go back to this. In terms of the factors which move stock prices, you can see there were actually very few factors which have led to all the movement. Guess what they were? Momentum, value, and growth. Guess what Alfesh is always bagging on about? Make sure you pick companies which tick the value box, and then within that are a subset of growing companies which tick it, and within that are a subset of momentum-based companies. Value, growth, momentum. That's what I always talk about. Why? Well, this image explains exactly why I talk about that. Because it means I'm more likely to get the winners. Because they have to tick every box. As opposed to trying to gamble on, well, I'm only going to pick low volati volatility companies or only high dividend ones. No, they have to tick every single box. Okay, that's what gives us the edge. Over the past year, <coughs> NASDAQ and S&P 33% up. Isn't that just amazing? I didn't know it was going to be this good a year. A lot of private investors who've gone to their pensions. Right now, I want you to go to your wealth manager and I want you to go to your workplace pension manager and say, how come since last September, you haven't got me a 33% return? And they're going to make all sorts of excuses. And I'll tell you the excuses they're going to make. Oh, well, well that's just a one-off. It isn't. This happened the previous year as well. Oh, well, 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 we've got a clever fund manager. They'll make it up to you eventually. They won't. They'll say, well, look, no, we've invested in some of those companies. You've got to diversify into Vietnamese companies. Why are you pissing around with Vietnamese companies when you should be investing in the ones generating the returns, which are already global, as I said to my audience uh, in Cape Cod when I was speaking. Uh, American companies are already naturally diversified because they're international. They get their income from uh, abroad as much as they do from the US. And the US in itself is a continent. They call it the continental US. It's a continent, okay? what is it four time zones if you exclude hawaii which is obviously not part of the continental us so uh what i'm saying is that you've already got the diversification you need the reason the fund managers and the ifas do it, well the ifas do it because they just get kickbacks from the fund management company for selling their product uh but the reason the fund managers do it is because they've been told you've got to sell this fund you've got to sell this fund you've got to sell this fund and if your fund is in a narrow area which doesn't have the opportunity to do that then they're not going to get the return not only that if you look at Eugene Faber and the Nobel Prize he got in economics, it was to point this out, exactly what I'm saying. And he got a Nobel Prize in economics for doing the data on it. Our job, just as a reminder, as I go into the stock uh, market pick, is time it takes to double money. If your fund manager and IFA are basically getting you bank interest rate returns, then you're going to be taking 17 years or 14 years to double your money. If you're getting what... For instance, the S&P did in sterling terms over the last 10 years, it's going to take five years to double your money. It's not me. It's not me saying, oh, it's because of my skill or whatever. No, it's just there was a massive tailwind. And this year, 33% return, which will make up for a potential quiet year last year. Or last year, there was over the 12 months, massive gains as well. So you'd be well on the way to do that. Um, Mr. Bo? No, you've not Mr. Bo. Mr. Bo will come back. Don't worry. Um, what you have missed is if you've got any of these, just be aware. Look at the relative underperformance they have. Look at this, St. James First Fidelity, 91, Bailey Gifford. They just ditch out funds because they get billions of assets and they get 
they charge a percentage of those fees and then they bloody underperform for you because they're getting paid. When you're working in your day job or in your business, you are working for a fund manager and the wealth manager. That's who you're working for. You should be working for yourself in your old age pension by taking control of it <coughs> and having the transparency of the data to know, that's what we do for our clients, know what you're buying and you pick them. And in whichever broker you want, don't say to me, I'll just give you manage it for me. No, we don't do that. We give you the data and the knowledge and access to me and my data so you can pick them suited to your personal uh, goals and returns and ambitions. Because you might be low policy, you might be high growth, you might be catching up on years of piss poor performance for your IFA. These are the top 10 FTSE 350 stocks over the past month, just out of interest, just so you know. Um, oh, and by the way, yeah, some of the fund managers, unbelievable. 91 firms have managed to jump because they're getting more assets. More people are walking blind into giving them more money. Look at 91. Look at the fund document. One of my clients sent me one of their 91 fund manager documents. They're paying 10% in fees over five years. Over five years, they pay 10% of their assets. So if they give them 10,000 pounds, they're paying 1,000 pounds in fees over five years. Basically, they're just working to pay the IFA and they're barely getting bank interest returns, right? S&P 500, where are we on this, on the stock market update? As I said, we're here, which means we're basically where we were here. Means the upside might be limited, we don't know. Uh, that is, if the trend were to project forward for another nine months, that's where you'd end up. I'm not saying that's gonna happen. What I'm saying is if you're just projecting this trend forward, okay? Uh, I'm not worried about any, what I call daddy bear falls. This is momentum falling through. Not yet, anyway. NASDAQ, similar kind of story with the S&P. We're sort of up around those points. And that's how it looks. FTSE 100. Um, I guess this concern about the budget. And if by the time the budget comes through, this kisses this and then it has a bounce, there'll be a relief. And I think there's probably more likely to be a relief. Uh, so there's potentially upside, but we don't gamble around budgets. Uh, because there'll be a relief that it wasn't as bad as expected because they've really telegrammed ahead that it's going to be really bad for pensioners and everybody else. And so if it's not as bad as expected, it should be a relief rally. Um, if it matches expectations, it should still also go up because the people have been selling into it. And if it's worse than expected, well, there's, that's only one of the three options. And so therefore, you've got two to the upside, one to the downside. Uh, one month ago, the top 10 S&P uh, there are these. Let's look at some of these. Let's look at some of these to see if we're missing anything, if there's any uh, strategies around them out of interest, and then we'll look at the broad market. So this is Constellation Energy, which is one of the big movers. Uh, it wouldn't fit into my great investments program for the simple reason it's not a value growth income 7, 8, 9, or 10. Um, if you felt it was going to continue in this trend, you'd look at that as an upside. You'd probably put a stop loss here. Doesn't fit into my program. But that's how you'd structure the trade or the investment over the next 12 months uh, if you really wanted it. But it doesn't fit into my program. Similarly, neither does Wynn Results because it's not a 7, 8, 9 or 10. But if you really were obsessed with it and you wanted to do it, you'd probably put a stop 20% below. And you'd be looking at that, I guess, as your upside target or at least an all-time high. So you're looking at about 40% to the upside, 20% to the downside. It doesn't fit into my program, not one I would do. Okay, similarly with this. You'd be looking at projecting an investment that much ahead, and you'd probably put a stop loss here. Uh, because, of course, if it was going to go there, it has no business going here. So you've got a 50% stop loss, and you haven't got a 100% gain. So it might not be worth it on a reward to risk basis. Okay, not within the program because it's not 7, 8, 9, or 10, neither is Albemarle. But again, if you were obsessively looking at it and you think you wanted to do it, that's your projection forward, and there's your stop loss. Okay, of course, it doesn't mean it's either or. Might just end up doing this after a year and you get nothing. But it's not 7, 8, 9, or 10. So we don't have enough confidence it'll do this at the moment. So it doesn't fit into our program. We're very, very stringent. What makes our filter out of 10,000 stocks? What meets our criteria? Okay, if you want to learn more about it, have a look at alpishpatel.com forward slash links. Norwegian Cruise Lines. Now, that does meet our value growth income, but it's overbought on the momentum. So it's not one we do. If you did want to trade structure on it, well, I guess you'd be looking at it going in that direction. Um, so you're looking about a stop loss here 
and a reward there. You want your reward to be double your risk. It doesn't put into ours, so just giving you the heads up. HP, that's your projection forward. You might say too optimistic, don't want to do it, in which case don't do it. Simple rule, if in doubt, leave it out. Doesn't fit into our program because it's overbought, even though that's there, that's overbought, but you put your stop loss there. Uh, if you really wanted to do this one, there's your risk and your reward should be at least double that over the next 12 months. I'm not saying it's going to do that because it doesn't fit into the program, but I'm just giving you, if you really wanted to do it, that's how I'd structure it. You know, if we're sitting in the hedge fund office and you walked in, said, boss, I really want to do this investment. I'd say, do it with your own money, but this is how I'd structure it. CrowdStrike Holdings doesn't fit into it because it's not 7, 8, 9, or 10. There's your projection based on historic movements of the trend. Doesn't fit into ours, but there's your stop loss. So your risk is that, which is about 50%. And your reward has to be 100% to justify that risk. Okay, Carnival, similar kind of story, overbought, doesn't fit into mine, even though it's a 7, 8, 9, or 10. There's your projection, your stop loss is below the recent lows. Okay, and it's not a trade, it's, you're looking at 12 months, give it 12 bloody months, okay? Doesn't fit into mine, like I said, neither does Costco, because it's seven, not 7, 8, 9, or 10. You're getting the hang of it now, you know where to put the stop, you put it down there. There's your rewards, rewards, double your risk, done. Apple, I'm not going to discuss here. It's for my great investments program clients only. If you've not joined up, alpashpatel.com forward slash links. Same with Amazon, just to let you know, hold all of these. Microsoft are having a close look at. Uh, Meta I got out of in April, just because I had to rebalance the portfolio, because since January of last year, it's done ridiculously well for my son, Studio ISA. I'm also on YouTube. Do have a look at that. I've got more coming up for you, more picks. Uh, but again, my YouTube channel, alpashpatel.com forward slash links, you'll find it there. So Bank of America, as you know, not one we own. But because it's a stock market update, it's one I cover. Still waiting for it to do that. So it's just a wait and hold uh, on that one. Netflix, again, not one I hold, but it's one I've been doing market updates for you for ages. It is overbought, so be careful. Wouldn't fit into our program because it's overbought. But if you wanted to do uh, a trade on it or an investment over 12 months on it, that's your projection. Your stop loss would either be there or here. So work out what that is. I think that's roughly 33%. So you'd want at least a 66% for the upside. Of course, it might hit your stop, in which case you've just lost 33% of your investment in there. And if you only wanted to lose 3,000 pounds max, then you'd only put 10,000 or $10,000. You'd only put 3,000 uh, $3, is the max you want to lose. You'd only put 10,000 in because 33% give you that walmart whilst it's a seven it's overbought so it doesn't fit in for us however there's your projection and you could either put a as i said fixed or you could just do a trading stop saying whatever that distance is you'll just trail that up behind the price easy 12 months boom okay it doesn't fit into the program because it's overbought you can see how stringent our program is neither does this you can structure this <coughs> you can structure this now that I've taught you so much, okay, <coughs> training, boom, and that's that. One of the great things of being out here in the US is, you know, there's a lot of people, fund managers, who sit in London and they claim to be US stock investors. You know, if you're not in the economy uh, and you're not taking regular trips out to see how things are in the heart of it, I'm going to be at NASDAQ later, I was at New York Stock Exchange yesterday. Uh, but you're not getting a pulse on the ground as well, not just from the data and the numbers, then it really does worry me. Uh, okay, you can see this doesn't meet our great investments program stringent requirements, but it has been a good one for us in the past and it will be in the future. But if you were doing it outside of the program, well, there's your projection and there's your stop. Pretty straightforward stuff, isn't it? Uh, CVS, I'm going to go into all of these. But yeah, it's a seven, it's higher risk because it hasn't crossed the momentum yet. Okay, but you get the idea with these. Don't forget, I'm a top voice on LinkedIn, so do follow me there. Have a look at alpishpatel.com forward slash links. And if you can't remember that, then at least be there. Oh, by the way, the reason somebody once asked me, so why is Bill Gates on there? Um, oh, it's to show you what a top voice is. There's very few top voices on LinkedIn and he's one, I'm one. So there you go. Do follow me on there and do like and all the rest of it. Thank you very much.